All praises, all honor, all glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. Double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And peace and salutation to Allah Hakim doing and pushing his word in all honesty, truth, and sincerity worldwide. And a sincere shalom to the elect. Let's get into this real quick. Um, you know what? Let me just turn this off and this off. Let's get into this real quick. Because the end, I had made mention of this at camp. The end of a scene is the beginning of another scene, okay? The end is the beginning of the next, right? Should say that. The end is the beginning of the next. Should have just put that in there, Salakia. Yeah. And what's the next? Our rulership. As it tells us right here. Um, Isaiah 45. 17. Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Okay, that's what's coming up. And before Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, before Yahweh brings down a kingdom, yo, Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence, right? Of war, uh, 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 evil, pestilence, okay? So before these kingdoms were brought down, the Lord would send the prophet to tell them and warn them, okay? Before that calamity comes, the warn the, the, the warning comes from, from Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Through how? Through his prophets. Okay? Go and warn them. Go and tell them where they're going off. Go and tell them what's what, what's up. Okay. So this is the end of Esau's kingdom. Yep, second Ezra. This is the end of Esau's kingdom, and we're pro proclaiming it amongst the people to let them know this is the end. Okay, Esau, you had your time. Job 9.24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And at one point, as it tells you in Revelation, that um, you were cast, you, you had your point in the Roman time. You know, the Romans, Alexander, whatnot. And then guess what? You got cast into that bottomless pit. You know, you, you're sealed up for that thousand years. And this little season, as it says that you shall be out, yeah, you're in. Okay, because this is a little season. Okay? And you're at your end. Because all the prophecies are, are, are popping up. Okay? Jeremiah chapter, uh, what was that, 49 and 20, which we've been seeing, you know, happening, popping up, like right, live right in front of our face, man. The scriptures don't lie. They don't skip a beat. Even if there was tremendous dust on the record, it's still going to play. It's still going to hit its line. There ain't nothing going to interrupt it and cause it to skip or sound funny or anything like that. Because this is the Lord's record. This is the Lord's movie playing out. Okay? So it's not going to skip that needle. <laughs> it's not going to skip a beat. I don't care what dust. Anybody try to throw any crumbs. It's all going to be removed. Because this is the Lord's movie. You can't interrupt this this um record. Okay? Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. You could go back to Genesis and read this. Okay. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So, right, going back into. Uh, Isaiah 45 and 7, that world without end, okay? But what did the Lord do? He raised up his prophets, okay? Jeremiah chapter 28 and 8, to go out there and speak this word before these things happen. To look to look for the elect, okay? Because this is the Lord's movie. This is the way he wanted it, all right? He chose Esau to play out his role, and he chose us to play out our role. He made one profane, and he went one on to excellency, okay? One on to honor. 
And we're the Trojan unto honor, not dishonor. Second Ezra chapter 3 and verse 13. Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them, whose name was Abraham, because Abraham and his forefathers, they were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, serving under gods, and he was told to leave, okay, and which he did. Him thou didst, him thou lovest, and unto him only thou showest thy will, and madest an everlasting covenant with him. Did it say with him, Cain? You know what I mean? No, it said unto him. Okay, it even says brothers unto him. It said, all right. And, and madest an everlasting covenant with him. Promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed, and unto him, and out of his seed, you know, we know he had Ishmael, Isaac, and the uh, seven sons of Kator, if I'm not mistaken. That's their names, Kator. Gotta go back into it. So he had seeds, but he was, the Lord was dealing with one of his seed. And we'll see who, who that was. So the promise wasn't given to Ishmael and none of these other nations. It was only given to one, okay? And made us an everlasting covenant. Didn't say covenants with him, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed. And unto him thou givest Isaac, okay? And unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob. And Esau, as for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee, and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great nation, a, a great multitude, Salakia. Okay? So, within Abraham's seed, he had Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob and Esau. But the Lord chose what? He chose that line through abraham isaac jacob the 12 tribes okay he didn't he didn't he didn't he was not pleased with with esau as it said that he he um it's like it. he did um as it's written jacob have i loved esau have i hated okay let me get into something real quick here going off of um yep here we go First Chronicles 16 and verse 13, O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones. See? He is Yahweh our power, his judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Even of the covenant, going back into what we were just reading, which he made with Abraham and of his of his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. You see that? So we know who the Lord is dealing with. He's dealing with Israel. He doesn't. He doesn't, he doesn't care about Esau, Edom. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's go into this real quick. Like I said, you know, he's in the end of his. He's in the end of his time. Okay. Esau, Edom. Uh. Isaiah chapter 24 verse 21 and it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high the kings of the earth upon the earth and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in prison and after many days shall they be visited okay and this is dealing with, um, you know, when them, when them, when they try to run into their bonkers, you know what I mean? Remember, the Lord said that right now he, he's called for fishers, Jeremiah 16 and 16, right? But after, they shall be what? Turned into hunters. And that's on to the elect. And Lord willing, we be of that number. But the main point here is, y'all going to be taken down, okay? Y'all going to be taken down. And you're going to be gathered together as, as prisoners in a pit. Because you didn't serve right, like today. 
that Halloween, that pagan shit. Here it is, you got the, the, the instructions in front of you, but you cast it behind you. You don't rule right. And Sirach tells you that as you know, the judge is of the city, so are all his officers and all them underneath. So you made the people to go off. He put that, as it tells in your Habakkuk, woe unto him that put that drink to his neighbor's uh, mouth. You know what I mean? Roughly phrasing. And all these philosophy, philosophies have you let run the earth, you know, rampant. Meanwhile, you got the instruction book in front of you. You know you ain't supposed to be keeping up and shit like this. But, as it is written, you're subjected onto what you're supposed to do. You know, you're Esau. You know what I mean? You're wicked. And in these last days and times, your, your, your society is going down. This is why you see the prophets out there giving you the 100% truth. And with the 100% truth come all these prophecies. And everything that we're seeing happening... You know, like I said, with the with the small hatters, the least of, of the flock shall draw them out. That fire, it's, it's the fire is getting bigger, man. First it was a little, you know, first it was a little bush. Now all of a sudden it's like apartment-sized block. Like, it, it, it grew well fast overnight. Anyways, Isaiah 14 and uh, 21, prepare a slaughter for his children for the iniquities of their father. For the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith Yahweh of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and the remnant and son and nephew, saith Yahweh. Okay? So this is what's going to happen. This is what's being prepared for you, Esau, Edom. The Lord is preparing a slaughter for your children, for the iniquities of their fathers, because guess what? You are your forefathers coming back in the reincarnation. Okay? That's why the Lord is saying, prepare ye a slaughter for you. Okay? Let's lock in one second. That's why the Lord is saying, prepare a slaughter for you. Because it's the end of your time, you know. That's why going back into the scripture, you know, it tells you that uh, Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of that fall because the next scene is coming. Okay. So the Lord is saying, basically, you're done, Esau, Edom. You know, you had your time to rule. You're over. Daniel 4 and 7. T. Oops. Daniel 4 and 17, this matters by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whosoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. So you see that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Not anybody else what he says that's it okay now what you say and this is the end of your society Esau Edom okay like going back to what it says the end is the beginning of the next of yeah <laughs> of the next okay and what is it the next scene coming up that's us ruling alright not y'all you had your chance you ruined it First Samuel 2 and uh, 7. Yahweh maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth, bringeth, he bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. He lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are Yahweh's and he has set the world upon them, right? So, he says he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the beggar up from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit and to make them inherit the, the throne of glory. 
So the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, man. Okay? Going back to Daniel 4 and 17. And the, the scene for you, Esau, Edom, is coming to an end. Your scene is coming to an end. Now let's read that in Revelation. It's the end of this society, man. This, this society doesn't have much more to go, man. It is finished, okay? It is done. It is over. <laughs> it's like on its last lump, on its last breath. Forget circling the drain. It's damn near down the drain. Just a couple drops and that's it, you know? Revelation uh, 18 and 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he carried, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils. And and the whole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hurtful bird. For all nations have drunken the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed, waxed, are waxed rich through the abundances of her delicacies. So it tells you, going back into... You know, nations have drunken of, of, of that wine of hers. Tells you in Jeremiah that they've drunken it. They're awake now. They're mad. Okay. And this is the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai arising and shaking these nations. Remember in Joel it says, tell them, tell the weak, say I'm strong. Okay. So this is, this is Yapa, man. Um. Continuing with verse 4, or let me go back to that verse 3. For all nations have drunken of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And you notice when America puts out a decree out there, everybody follows follows after that, that decree. They take a, a, a small cup of that wine. Okay, but they're tired of it. They're tired of the bully on the block, because the Lord is is rising these things up, man. And I heard a, another voice from heaven saying, "Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God have remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Double unto her." double according to her works in the cup which she have filled filled to her double how much she have glorified herself live and live deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her for she saith in her heart i sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow therefore shall her plagues come in one day death mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And all the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously, deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off, standing, standing afar off, for the fear of her torment, saying, At last, at last, that great city Babylon that that mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and that's right this place is going to be destroyed within one hour it's not going to take the Lord much to take this place down man remember therefore a plague shall come in one day death mourning famine she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her okay and all these uh, uh all these other nations that have, have been um you know, mixing and dwelling with her. These um these merchants, these 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 like China, you know what I mean? All these other nations that have been mixing with her and making business with her, the merchants, they're gonna launch fucking nukes on this place too. Okay? 
it's not gonna be a pretty sight. Hey, this is why the Lord said that. You know, we're we're, we're begging Yahweh Bashim Yahushai for mercy. Amos chapter five and verse eighteen. Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. Okay, so when this this place gets taken down, taken out, as it tells you when we're reading here, in one hour, okay, or that death, that famine, all that mourning is going to come, but she's going to be burned with fire. She's going to be nuked. She's going to be destroyed. So this is the end of Esau, Edom's kingdom. Okay, as I said right here, the end is the beginning of the next, of the next scene. Okay, and what's the next scene? I'm going to end out on this scripture. You know, because this has to be said, has to be said, you know, as a servant of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, our servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, we got to give you it, okay? No matter if you, you don't understand or this and that, you know, we, we, we broke down to you plain. Meaning, if you don't understand it in spirit to say it, well, I don't agree with that. You know what I mean? I don't believe in that. Well, we gave it to you plain, man. We got your blood off our hands. We, we, we sound the trumpet. Okay, we're, we're barking, we're voicing the alarm, man. Jeremiah 28 and 8, before the Lord takes down the kingdom, man, he sends his servants, his prophets out there. You don't just do something at school and your dad flips out, yo, what the fuck? No, he gives you a warning before ahead of time, look, stop playing with that kid, I don't want to see you with that kid. Look, listen to your teacher, stop screwing around in class. I keep hearing about you, you're, you're being distracted by friends of this, that. If you don't stop it, I'm taking away, you know, your stuff, you're grounded, you will get a whoop ass, all that shit. And what happens? He does it, boom. You 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 give him that just dessert, okay? And that's what the Lord has given to Babylon, to America. Isaiah 45 and verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed nor confound world without end, okay? And that's what's going to happen. That's the next next up all right and with that all praises all honor all glory be unto yahweh bahashem yahushai bahashem raka kodash double honors to the apostle elders of great millstone that rule well and peace and citation to all the akim doing and pushing this word in all honesty truth and sincerity worldwide and a sincere shalom to the elect i hope you're edified lord willing to next time wa abad babal shalom akim